Hello, this is The Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Pagani Design PD-1712 homage to an Omega Aqua Terra chronograph. Let's start out with the wrist check. I'm wearing a Pagani Design PD-1662 GMT with the NH34 movement and the Pepsi dial. And Greg was wearing my Addy's Dive MY-H6 1000 meter dive watch. Grogu said Boba Fett's therapist told him that he could help with the trauma of being in the Sarlacc pit by forgiving the Sarlacc. Since the Sarlacc is dead, one way he can do that is writing a positive story about a Sarlacc. He showed Grogu the first paragraph. It reads, In a hole in the ground there lived a Sarlacc, not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down or to eat. It was a Sarlacc hole, and that means comfort. Grogu said, wow, that is a positive description of a horrible creature. And it's nice that you're taking the task seriously. Fennec Strand said, huh, sounds like a Tolkien gesture. Okay, let's take a look at the watch. Comes with this Pagani design box. Nice cleaning cloth. And we don't need to see the unsigned warranty card and instructions. Get this box out of the way, and here's the watch. It's a nice looking watch. When it comes to Omega chronographs, everyone just loves the Speedmaster. It's the first watch on the moon with plenty of history. The Speedmaster's biggest weakness is 50 meters water resistance, which is no big deal on the moon, but can be limiting down here on planet Earth. Omega makes many a chronograph in their Seamaster lineup, but not everyone wants a dive style watch. So Omega started making a chronograph in their Aquaterra lineup, which are Seamasters, but not dive watches. Aquaterras are just everyday watches with decent water resistance, but not dive watches. Must not have been a huge hit because Omega no longer makes it. But when it comes to Pagani Design Omega homages, you're getting the same 100 meters on your VK63 powered Speedmaster homage as you are on the Seamaster Aquaterra homage. So the biggest difference between the two is purely visual. So if you are an Omega fan and want a chronograph, why buy this when you can just get the Speedy? Really comes down to if you prefer the looks. One big difference is the bezel. This one has a smooth steel bezel with no writing, unlike the Speedmaster's tachymeter bezel that you will never use. Then there is the style. The Aquaterra style is quite different with the teak dial and the pointed indices. Then there is also the clasp. This one has a butterfly while the Speedy has a more traditional. The watch is 39.9 millimeters at the bezel, 47.2 millimeter lug to lug with inverted end links. It's only 12.1 millimeters thick, has a 20 millimeter lug width, and weighs 135 grams on the supplied bracelet with three links removed. Yes, you heard that right, three links. So you should be able to wear this if you have a really big wrist. The bezel is smooth and polished with no tachymeter because you really don't need one because you're never going to use one. And then we have the dial. The dial is a teak dial. And then we have the Pagani design name and logo up top. And then it says chronograph. It's kind of hard to read depending on the angle, but that's fine. No big deal there. And then it doesn't give the water resistance on the dial, but it does on the case back. And you get 100 meters. Then, this being an Aquaterra homage, we have these pointed indices, except for the majors, of course. And then we have the arrow tip minute hand, that's just the tips loomed. And then we have the Dauphine hour hand, that's fully loomed. And then we have a spear tip chronograph hand, where the tips loomed. And then we have the subdial hands, and those are actually loom too. And on the bottom subdial, we have the running second hand. On the right subdial, we have a 24 hour indicator. Those are always kind of useless. And then on the left subdial, we have the minute counter for the chronograph. 
Then we have a date at the 430. Some people don't like dates at the 430 on chronographs. I don't mind them. I'd rather have a date than no date. And then we have a side screw down crown. The thread action seems fine. Pops when you unscrew it. Then screwing it back down, it catches fine. Then we have the pushers. Now on a real Aquaterra chronograph, the pushers are rectangular, but these are round. But I guess that's really no big deal. I'm sure on Pagani Design, there's a lot of reuse between models. And that just would have cost a lot more to make them rectangular. Push the top pusher, starts the chronograph. This is a mecha quartz movement, so it takes five times a second. Push it again to stop, and then we get the instant reset because it's a mecha quartz, BK63. Then the crystal is a flat sapphire, but there's not a lot of reflection. I mean, yeah, you're going to get some, even on glass. But it doesn't seem too bad, so I don't know if there's any AR coating or not, but you can see through it just fine. And then we have the case. The case is really nice. I like the case. Brushed on the sides. Got a chamfered edge here. Yeah, really nice case. And then we have a screw down case back. And it has a seahorse on it. Then it says water resistant, 100 meters, stainless steel. Pagani design, then gives the model number PD1712. Underneath the case back is the Seiko VK63 movement. This is a Mecha Quartz chronograph movement. The best thing about it is that the large hand is the chronograph hand and not the small hand like a lot of cheaper quartz chronographs. And this seems to be the go-to chronograph movement for uh, watches in this price range. The bracelet's a three link with polished center links. But look at this though, they're fully articulating, which is rare. So that's nice. You can It means that it wraps around your wrist a little bit better. Then we have inverted end links. Uh, I have one issue though with these inverted end links is they get stuck. So I, I imagine the more you wear it, the less stuck they're going to get. But right now that they'll get stuck here. And sometimes they'll be kind of bunched up when you put it on your wrist. And then we have push pin adjusters, not screw pins. Which I'm fine with that. I really, uh, screw pins, I've had a lot of issues with screws coming out. But I never have issues with push pins coming out. And then we have a butterfly clasp. And it's unsigned. But it's, it's in there good. Some butterfly clasps are really wobbly. And also it's a push button and not a friction. So that's nice. The real Aquaterra chronograph does have a butterfly clasp, but it has a center piece in it that's signed. Uh, this one does not, and uh, that's fine. Personally, I'd rather have a more traditional clasp, but but hey, the real one has a butterfly, so they went with butterfly. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. Looks nice. Wears nice. Good wrist roll. Here we are in the loom room. You usually don't get even decent loom with the Pagani design, but I test them anyway because that is what I do. As we speed up the time, we see that at least the subdials are loomed, but everything is fading fast. The strongest loom are the major indices, but that does no good if you can't see the hands. This is very poor loom. What do I like about this watch? Well, you don't see a lot of Aquaterra chronograph homages out there, so it's nice to see that we have one. I like the fact it has inverted end links. <laughs> they, they, they do get stuck. I like the fact that the bracelet's fully articulating. 
And even though there's no mention of AR coating, you can see through the sapphire crystal just fine. What are my grapes and groans? Lousy loom. And links can get stuck. And the bracelet and clasps just aren't as nice as their Speedmaster homage. Do I recommend this watch? Sure. As long as you prefer the looks of it to the other VK63 powered Begine design watches. There's nothing about the watch that would prevent you from buying it. In a Sea of Daytona and Speedmaster homages, this one really stands out. Personally, I prefer the looks of the Speedmaster, but that's just me. So once again, it all depends. Do you like the looks of the Aqua Terror? Well, thank you for watching my review of the Pagani Design PD1712. And I will be back with another review or unboxing. Actually, unboxing. I just got something in the mail the other day. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.